What's up? Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to talk about handling webhook notifications from the YouTube API. Now, these are called uh, PubSub Hubbub, the integration, or the new name for this type of integration is called WebSub. And there was very little information about how to do this on the internet. So I'm excited to, to try to like make some documentation and just share what I've learned about how to set this up. So the way this works is we're going to first set up a callback URL where we will receive notifications from some hub. The next thing we're going to do is go over to the Google Hub, which is at pubsubhubbub.appspot.com slash subscribe. This is where we're going to enter our publicly accessible callback URL and then a topic, which is essentially just reference to the channel ID. We're going to go through a verification step and then we'll have access to receive post, post requests with an atom, which is kind of just this like atom feed, sort of looks like an RSS feed and it will contain the ID of the YouTube video and the uh, ID of the channel where we can go and retrieve the video that was either updated or uploaded or changed. There's not very many activities that you can listen for changes on, but there's just enough that I think it'll be useful for us. So what we wanna do is the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a new uh, controller called the webhooks controller. Now inside of our routes file, we're gonna add resources webhooks. Now in our webhooks controller, because we're receiving a notification from a third party, we want to skip our before action that verifies authenticity tokens because we won't actually be able to handle any CSRF checks um, because it's a third party. We're not like embedding anything into our forms. So we'll have a create method and we'll also have an index method here. Now the create method, this is gonna be where we're handling post requests from uh, from YouTube that are going to have that um, that Atom feed in, inside of it. So handle Atom notification from pub sub hubbub. <laughs> and then our index, this is going to be like our verify, uh, our verify pub sub hubbub callback. Okay. Now the way that this works is that inside of our index, and this is part of the PubSub Hubbub spec, we need to return some challenge that is in the request for our verification. So this is like down in the belly of the beast of the, the actual spec was where I found this because there's, again, there's like really not very much content out there on the internet about how to do this. So for now, what we can do is we'll just p params for the index and we'll render back a status of JSON or JSON status of okay. Now uh, we've got our rail server running here. I wanna fire up ngrok. So ngrok is a way to set up a tunnel to your local machine that will give you a publicly accessible URL. So we can say ngrok HTTP 3000. This fires up a brand new um, URL to which um, we will, if we receive requests on that URL, they'll be forwarded in. There's another really cool thing here is you can just open up the web interface and see any requests that are coming in. So if we were to just load that page, deceptive site ahead. Okay, whatever details. Um, yes, I want to continue visiting the unsafe site. Ah, right. Okay. So we will need to add ngrok as, um, to our list of hosts. So from application RB, I'm just going to disable, um, this host check, uh, config hosts is equal to nil. That's going to disable the host check so that we can use this locally. And we should be able to go here once we restart. And now we can see our page. So this is, uh, if we go back to the inspect tab, we'll see that that request came in. So we can see the favicon, uh, favicon request, we're getting pulling an application JSON or whatever. You can basically just, you can see all of the requests. Okay, I click clear requests. Now we're gonna use this um, domain slash webhooks as the callback URL. Now the topic URL, we want this to be set to this string plus our channel ID. So we need to go find our channel ID. So youtube.com and let's see your channel. It should be this. Welcome. Thing okay. So I will drop in my channel ID. The verification type, I wasn't able to get asynchronous working. I'm not sure how that actually, why async didn't work. Uh, so we're going to use synchronous instead. Um, I did not pass a verify HMAC or lease seconds in. Uh, so I think this should just create the subscription for us. Okay, so here we see challenge mismatch. Now, if we look at our requests that came in, we see this get request and these are the query string parameters. So we have a challenge, uh, let's make this bigger. We have the hub challenge, the lease in seconds, the mode and the topic. 
Now this hub.challenge, we need to um, make our response render this value back when we receive a get request to slash webhooks in order to verify that we own that. So let's go back to our webhooks controller inside of our index action. We will just say um, maybe like if params, if the params has this thing, then render plane of that. Okay, so now what we can do is go back to our verification flow and click on do it again. And we got a no op. So when you click it and it refreshes, but you don't actually see anything, I think that's in practice actually doing, a, it's doing a no op. So now here, if we see, now we see this 200 um, and we can look in the response body and we can see that that is actually the hub challenge. So now we, we have a sense that something may have happened or we don't actually get very much feedback that anything happened. So if you're wondering like, hey, did I actually subscribe to this? What you can do is grab your callback URL, drop it down here, grab the topic, drop that down here and say get info. And this will tell you a bunch of information about the subscription, including its state. So this tells us that it is verified. All right, so now we're in a good place. So we have uh, connected to this um, this hub, the pub sub hub bub dot app spot dot com hub. And now we should receive notifications as a subscriber to this endpoint when things change on our video. So if we go over to, um, our, yeah. So our create endpoint is where we're going to handle those updates. But if we head over to our channel and go to our, the YouTube studio and we crack open a video. So let's just say one of these most recent videos here, import dev two articles. And now let's say we enter in some spaces and a smiley and click on save. This should fire an update where we receive a post request. Now this takes a little bit of time and I don't, I mean like, obviously this is flowing through a bunch of different systems. So that change to the description there we go. Okay, so it just landed. So that change to the description is going to flow through and now we're receiving this as a post request. So we didn't render any response back because we don't actually have a template. We're not actually handling this in any way, but you can see that this is the ID of the video here. So R on GK, whatever. And that's the same as this video that we just edited. Okay. So now we are getting notifications that this video is changing indeed. Um, we also get a little bit of information. We see the title here. We also see the, you know, um, the author, when it was published at, but we don't actually see the description or any of the details about what was changed. So what I want to do is take the ID of the video and refetch it or do some sort of automation. So I'm going to do that in a background job. I don't want to do that right here. So what I'm going to do instead is say rails G model YouTube uh, YouTube event. And this is going to have the data. This is the raw data. It's also going to have some, a status of whether it's processed and then like processing errors. Um, in case it fails when we process this in the background, uh, what else do we need? Let's see. I think maybe we should also store the ID of the video on the event level. I think this is fine. Let's just start with this. Okay. So, So inside of our webhooks controller, we're going to say event is YouTube event dot new um, or dot create bang with data is request dot body dot read. And then the status by default, the status will be, will be pending. And then what we want to do is handle the event in the background. So we're going to make a new, a new thing called rails G job YouTube event handler. So we're going to have our YouTube event handler dot process later event perform later for our event. All right. So now inside of we'll say rails db migrate Inside of our uh, YouTube event, 
here, we can set an enum up for status and we'll say it is um, pending, processing, processed, failed. And this gives us a bunch of different statuses. So by default, I think we want it to be pending. I'm gonna say Rails DB rollback and then we'll open our create YouTube events thing and say the status is default to pending. Actually, I kind of want this to be an integer too. And we'll default it to zero. Okay, Rails DB migrate. All right. So then this becomes something different. Pending, processing, processed, Sure, failed. All right, and then we have our data and, okay, so this should be a good start. So now if we go back to our webhooks controller, I think everything looks good. So we're creating the event. We've got to perform later. We'll just render JSON of status, okay? Sure, this seems good. Now let's go make another change to, oh, in fact, like inside of our YouTube event handler, a uh, job. We don't actually have anything that we're performing. So here we're gonna say something like event. And what I really wanna do is say like, okay, um, find or create a new YouTube video by ID. And then if the video already exists, update it with the new data. Otherwise, um, create it. Uh, but for now, we'll just say like puts, um, yeah, event.data. So we're gonna handle that event.data somehow. Uh, and I think what we wanna do is um, handle, we wanna read in that XML. There's a bunch of different XML parsers. There's like Atom feed specific things. Um, in a live stream that I watched showing how to do this, uh, the it was Sunday something. I'll, I'll add a link to the description in the description. Um, he used uh, hash from XML. So that might be a, an option that we might uh, use here. Otherwise, we will just kind of look directly at the data. Okay, so let's let's um, let's take a look here. What we want to do is we want to go and vi update another video. So now I'll just remove the smiley and click save. And this should cause a post request to come in through ngrok again. It's going to take a little while but theoretically we should be creating an object in the database that we can then go and mess around with. Boom, okay. We got a, uh, a 200 okay from our post request to slash webhooks. We can look in the server log. We see a bunch of stuff came in here. We have our, our output YouTube event handler job ran and we have this, um, this XML that was output. So if we open up Rails console, we can say YouTube event.last. And we can see all of this data is the XML for the object that came in. Can we say hash dot from XML YouTube event dot last dot data? Boom, okay. So then the thing that we really care about is this video ID. We can go out and fetch that and use it to um, continue populating all of our information. All right, so what's really cool about this is that we can now automatically listen for changes instead of polling for any of those updates. I think we'll leave it there. This is how you can integrate directly with the YouTube API to receive push notifications when something changes in the title or the description or a brand new video is uploaded. Thanks so much for watching, really appreciate it. And if you're liking this kind of content, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.